the same time, the same speed, because you're all going to end with my hope is in you alone, in you alone. You can't try to speed past it. You're all going to end at the same time. All right. Team one, raise your hand. You know what you're singing? Yeah. Team two, raise your hand. You know what you're singing? Don't worry. There'll be a whole bunch of other voices singing it when you sing. So you're not going to come back. Ready? <laughs> and I'll stay with team two and team one. You guys gotta be loud. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, go.
guide them and help them, Lord God. Open their eyes, and Lord God, give them peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I actually uh, made a Can you pass up the <laughs> So, yeah. So the handheld ones, you can pass out just one to each group or whatever. But if you give them a handheld one, you have to give them a marker as well. If you give them a big one, the markers are packed. Yeah, thank you. So, you guys have been working with uh, Sister Scriptures. So last month you guys were working with Ephesians 2, 19, 19. and this month you're working with Ephesians 2, 20. So uh, to refresh your memory, and for those of you that were not here, Ephesians 2, 19 is, So then you are not, no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. And Ephesians 2, 20 is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. So last week, Maribel and KK did some awesome stuff with you guys. And I was like, wow, this is great. And that was where all my ideas were in. And I was like, and I got nothing. So I was like, Lord, <laughs> Lord, I really have nothing. I don't, I don't know what to teach. So he gave me a, kind of a unique idea for you guys. So everyone should have a whiteboard and everyone should have a marker. Don't worry, all these will be sanitized after you when they're brand new. Just open them up and everything. I'm going to have you guys watch some videos. And on the whiteboards, you're going to write down your reaction to these videos. And then I will explain how these videos actually go with my lesson. They're not just random videos I picked out. So this is the first video.
Johnny's up. Thank you. All right, the reactions. You just watched trees that had to have been 50, 60 feet up disappear in the water. The reaction. How does trees think? They think, okay? That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Are the animals I, <laughs> I'm honestly confused. Okay, I've got one, one group that's awesome. Uh, are the animals dead? Yeah, yeah. It's a question. They were in that tree. We've got, hmm. Okay, we got what the heck. We got cool and awesome. Sinkhole, yummy. Trees, no. We got OMG. It's sinking. It's sinking. Yeah. What was the yellow thing? I don't know what it was. Yellow thing. Is there a hole in the ground? All right, so, all right, so that was the sinkhole, and that yellow thing was the marker of the edge of the sinkhole, so people know that this is the sinkhole, you need to stay away from it, and or, if, I mean, if you don't, you will end up like those trees. Oh, we've got a crazy, uh, an extremely crazy, but Aquaman is here, yes? Aquaman. I assume if anyone would do that, it would be Aquaman. All right, next video. Early this morning, neighbors just outside of Tampa, Florida, startled by a sharp, crackling sound. The earth had opened beneath them, a dangerous sinkhole quickly growing. There's a sinkhole right next to our neighbor's house, and it's literally eating the house, like, completely. Jose Rodriguez and his family at first didn't understand what was happening, but then scrambled to safety as the walls of their homes cracked and the floors buckled under their feet. The first time I didn't know what to do, actually. I just saw the house. It was bouncing, cracking, uh, falling apart. The sinkhole was now 225 feet in diameter, approximately 50 feet deep and growing as residents in nearby homes evacuate. Unfortunately, I don't think people in this community are going to sleep peacefully for a couple weeks. This part of Florida is known as Sinkhole Alley. In 2013, just an hour away, another massive sinkhole swallowed a man after it opened beneath his bedroom. His body was never found. Florida's sandy soil sits on top of a layer of clay and a layer of limestone. Circulating water from too much rain or drought Stop. can dissolve the under... Anything can happen. 
right? Any, anything can happen. There can be storms at any time. It doesn't even matter if it was 300 years ago. There were storms back then. If you're building a house upon the sand, you are asking for it. You really are. You're more than asking for it. You're going to get it sometime. <laughs> So if you can't see, the picture is these houses are built right on the beach. They, right right. Right. they got a nice sunset though. <laughs> You're right, they're watching you from the ocean. <laughs> they're swimming in there with the dolphin. What do you got, please? What else does Sam have? What is on his head? OMG, he seems scary. He is very intense. Love his hat. <laughs> It's tripped out, tripped out. Stupid people. <laughs> yes, stupid people. <laughs> I, the guy's correct was people were pretty foolish. I, I kind of agree. Kill a few, big swimming pool, I guess. I guess if that's what you want to think, everyone thinks positive sometimes. What is the black square? Um, the black square is showing you the sand. Like it's literally, they built it. In sand, like there was no, it was, it's sand. Oh, so yeah. that man doesn't know how to be quiet. Yeah, he was kind of loud. He was very, he was very upset. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yes, that is their fault. Their fault. Yeah. They built it on this. What do we got over here, gentlemen? <laughs> so, to where I was having a hard time paying attention to him because of his hat. Actually, we're going to talk about that too in a second. All right, next video. Uh, yeah, one more and then we'll talk for a second. On the water before we get wet. Here comes the rain on the house on the rock. And let's see, as the rain continues to pour down, and we begin to see some of the flooding here, just keep it coming right there. Let's, let's rain on this house on the rock real good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good job, good job. Yeah, keep yeah. raining on the house on the sand. And back on the rock, and now let's see some more rain on the sand. Mikey, you want to come here and help us do the rain on the sand? There we go. Keep raining, keep raining. Keep raining right there. Go, okay. Ethan, now let's look like a hold it. Keep holding, keep holding. Whoa, whoa, what happened? What happened? We had rain, we had flood. What happened over here? Was 
You're no longer strangers or foreigners. You're no longer outside. As long as you have Jesus in your heart, you're a part of the house of God. And for the Ephesians 2.20, it's talking about a cornerstone. And when you're talking about Jesus being the cornerstone, he's what you guys are building everything on. He's starting out your building. But, like the first video we saw, which, who remembers the first video that we saw? Cody? No. That wasn't the first one. What do we got? Yes, we got the tower falling. So, you guys can have the foundation of that tower. You guys can see it because the longer in the video, you can see how big it was. There was a lot of people holding up that tower of people. There was a lot, it was a very solid foundation, except when it was getting built up, it just couldn't handle how high up it went. So you guys, you guys have Jesus as your cornerstone. He's what you guys are building your faith on. However, if you're not building the building correctly, it'll still fall apart. You need a good foundation. Now that second video was showing you guys, this, all the sinkhole videos were telling, showing you guys what happens. You don't have a good foundation. If you don't have a good foundation, it does not matter how great your building is. If what it's built on, what it's actually standing on, is garbage, it'll fall apart as soon as something bad happens. So the last one we saw with the I'm sorry, the last, the, the sequel-ish videos where they built their house literally on the sand, on the side of the ocean, which is a horrible place to build your house if it doesn't have a good foundation. Because as soon as the sand gets wet, your building is going to move. It's going to fall. There's no way it's going to stand. If your relationship with God, you have Jesus as a cornerstone, but the foundation that you have, this, this house you're building with the Lord, with you and the Lord, if it's bad, if it's built on sand, it is going to crumble, you guys. It's not going to last the test of time. It's not going to last any kind of hardship. Now, the guy that was doing the educational video, he was teaching his young sons what happens when you don't build your house right, if the foundation is messed up. It's going to crumble. Now, you saw he poured water on the house with the rock, right? And he poured water on the house with the sand. You guys, bad things happen, crazy things happen to everybody. If bad and crazy things happen to Jesus, the Son of God, God in the flesh on earth, then they're going to happen to us. But if your foundation, everything, the cornerstone of Jesus, and everything that you're being taught and everything you're learning is built on a bad foundation, it is going to fall apart. Just like the guy that you guys couldn't understand was ranting on, he was like, these people are fools. Why would you build a building on something that's not solid? You know bad things are going to happen. Why would you spend that time to do all that? You know you were going to lose it all. So that's my question to you guys. What is your foundation? We are teaching you guys all these lessons. We're telling you about the Lord. Some of you guys have accepted Jesus in your heart. You have him as your cornerstone. You're building up a building. How is your foundation? What are you building on? Is your foundation, oh, I'm just here because my parents made me come now. I kind of like it, so now it's cool. I accept Jesus. I'm going to start building. That's not a good foundation. Because when the rains come, because they will come. Crazy man in the hat, you know, it's hard to understand him. But he said, it, he's, the storms will come. He's like, it happened, it will happen again. Storms will come. You got a cornerstone, good. You go to church, you come to youth group, you read your Bible sometimes, you really pay attention on Fridays, you try to go to, you listen to the service on Sundays sometimes, you listen to good music every once in a while, that's all, that's all great. You're building up a good house. But what's your foundation? Because if it's only what we're, if it's only what we're telling you, it's not solid enough. Like the house that we saw, and like I think like the third video, where they were sleeping and all of a sudden they hear things cracking and breaking and all of a sudden their house disappears in the sand. 
or that poor man who was literally swallowed up. He didn't even know what was happening. He was in his bed, asleep, gone, dead, boom. That is reality. That is the reality we all face. What is your foundation? Do you think it's good? Because you've got a good house. I'm sure that guy's house was pretty awesome. But the foundation wasn't right. And in their case, they didn't know that there was something wrong. You guys have the opportunity to hear. Check your foundation. Check where you're building your building. What is your heart? What's in your heart? What's in your mind? Because it doesn't matter how beautiful it looks. It doesn't matter how you guys are acting. It doesn't matter what you show us. What is that foundation? Because as soon as something bad happens, as soon as the rain comes, because it will, it doesn't skip anybody, will your house fall apart? If something bad happens, it's the first thing you do is get mad at God. It's not a good foundation. If something bad happens, the first thing you do is start praying, reaching out to other people, trying to get help. That is a good foundation. You could have a one-room shack like they do in the slums and other places on a good foundation that will never crumble or fall, or you can have the biggest mansion and amazing thing on a foundation that will literally sink and will suck everything in and nothing will ever be seen again. So what is your what is your All right, what is your heart? What is that foundation? Your foundation is your heart, it's your mind. It's that connection. It's not just talking the talk, it's everything. It's what people don't see. Like they were talking about in the news report. Sinkhole, sinkholes happen because you built underneath this top layer of soil. There is clay and there is sand, and you cannot see it. And when it starts to rain, Water gets in there, and when the water leaves, it becomes a hole, and it will suck everything down. So what's your foundation? It might look good, but what's really under there? The only people that know is you and God. Now, it's good to come to youth group. It's good to know God. It's good to do all the things that you're doing. You are building a solid house. That is good. I'm not saying that's bad. You have a cornerstone, and you have Jesus. He's building up the house with you. It's going to be amazing. But if your foundation is not good, if there is a crack in your foundation, your building will be messed up. Something will be wrong. And I'm telling you this from personal experience. I have, I've had to rebuild my house, rebuild my relationship with God, because I had a crack in my foundation. And it was bad. And I didn't realize how bad it was. I knew it was there, if I'm being honest. I knew it was there. I didn't want to deal with it. But when all hell broke loose, boy, did my house crack up. It was bad. And I had to rebuild everything. Luckily for me, it was only a crack. You can fix a crack in your foundation. I mean, with God's help, you can fix it. It being swallowed whole in the sinkhole. Just like those trees, they just, did you see how quickly they just disappeared? That sinkhole is in, that sinkhole is in Florida. And it's happening right this second. This was swallowing up miles of the Florida Everglades. They're swallowing it up. And there's little, there's nothing anyone can do to stop it. It'll just keep going. So right now it's in swamps. It's not doing much except destroying the ecosystem and killing a bunch of animals. But eventually it will get to It'll get to people's houses. People build their houses on the, they build their houses in the water. They build their houses there. It's going to be sucked up. It's not solid ground. When will it stop? When it hits a strong foundation. The sinkhole will be stopped if the foundation is good. If not, it'll just keep swallowing everything up, which really sucks for the people in Florida. <laughs> Hindsight, just let you guys know. Real fact, true story. It's terrible. So, the scripture, the scripture of Ephesians two twenty says the foundation. It literally says the foundation built 
on the apostles and the prophets. The foundation of the apostles and the prophets is when they went out and telling people about Jesus. Your foundation has to be Jesus. You can't do it any other way. It can't be because your parents made you come. It can't be, oh, because I've got nothing else to do. Or, oh, because I want to see this person. No, it has to be Jesus. That's the foundation. So not only is Jesus your foundation for your building, he's also the cornerstone of your building. But if the foundation is not Jesus and just the cornerstone is, it can sink. You guys have no idea. I have been in youth group since I was 11 years old. I'm 30. I've been a youth leader since 18. You have no idea how many people have built awesome houses with the Lord. Amazing. And their foundations were cracked. And as soon as a real flood, as soon as a real rainstorm came, they were gone. Everything crumbled. Now, does that mean it can't be fixed? No. We serve a really good God. He will fix, he will put everything back together again. But that takes time. And it also, man, a lot of hurt and pain go with that rebuilding. So if you can avoid some of it, it would be really beneficial. But that's on you. It's your foundation. Like I'm telling you, you, you don't want... You, I mean, it's sad to be in my position to step back and look at all those people that I know. To fill this room three times over of you that I've seen in, since 11. And how many of them have gone through such horrible things because their foundations were terrible? Some of them never recovered. Some of them have recovered. Some of them are in the process of recovering. They're rebuilding the foundation. They're rebuilding the house. It's a slow process. But you don't want to be in that position. So this is the last thing I'm going to say before I'm going to play this last video. It's about three minutes, and it'll play all the way through, and I'll get your guys' reaction. So the foundation is where everything is placed on, which is your heart, which is your spirit, your mind. You on the inside, the true you. Um, if it's not firm, built in the right way, the house of God will not stand right. It won't stand. If the foundation is not right, your foundation is Jesus. That's what you're building it on. He has to be the only reason. Anything else is a crack. Then, God is so good, he's not only your foundation, what you're standing on, what's deep, deep down, he's also what your house is built of. So when everything does happen, because it will, it'll suck, it'll be loud, it'll be scary, it'll be messy. You have seen floods, they suck, they're loud, the rain, the thunder, it, it's, a, it's a mess. But it won't destroy your house. It'll mess it up. It'll sit a tree through the window, scream, all over and around, the lights will go off. But it won't destroy everything. You'll still have everything that you need. So I'm going to play this last thing for you guys. Well, first, let me remind you of the scripture verse. And it's Ephesians 2.20, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. That is the good news of Jesus Christ. That Jesus came and he died for you. He forgives you. He can help you. He'll change you. In the partnership, he's the foundation. And Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. So he is not only your foundation, but he is the most important piece of your house. Because that's what you guys learned last week. So Connie, can we watch that last video? You guys, go ahead and pick up those uh, whiteboards. Last video. There were two men, each set out to build their home. One built his upon the rocks, while the other did so upon the sand. Can you turn it up, son? And then came the storm. There are absolutes. Things that are fixed that no matter how much we may want to move them, will always remain. 
Jesus said, anyone who hears his words and does them will have his life built upon the rock. But to not do them is to live upon the sand. Rock or sand. You see, the ocean is immense, completely vast, pulled by forces beyond man's control, and therefore, it demands respect. You see, it doesn't know you, and it doesn't care about you. It can't. The ocean is an unyielding force. You've been to it. And much like the tides of the ocean, each wave of our culture is a voice washing over the known ideas and fixed points of the world around us. This energy, this force, presses on as each new generation takes the place of the last. And the sands that we've come to identify with shift. The waves move the sand. Culture changes. We're told that there is no God and you are an accident. There's no right or wrong way. You make your own truth. On these sands, even established scientific facts like gender are shifting. From here, fame and popularity become more important than kindness and virtue. The lines of good and evil are blurred. Compliance to these ideas is demanded, and the rock, the rock is hated. You see, culture will mold you, and society will shape you. It will forcibly bend you to its will as long as you remain on the shore. And today, we haven't just built homes on the sand. No, we've built kingdoms and countries upon it. More and more have left the rock to enjoy the temporary pleasures of the shore, unaware that nothing will withstand the tide. Make no mistake, the tide is rising. These sands will move. Don't let yourself be drawn out to sea, but rather find the rock. Without a foundation, without a guide, and without rules, we know a society breaks down. See, we've been taught to look at the teachings of Jesus as something to block us from pleasure and enjoyment, when in reality, it was put there to build our life upon. To protect us. The world always calls to us, but it never wants us to leave. And yes, I fully engage society, but my home is on the rock. The water is already rising. We're living in a world gone mad, and no one has the answers. When the floods come, something always has to give. Either the waves will break you, or the rock will break the waves. There's only one who can save us. He's the one who walked on water through the storm to save those who believed in him. When Peter began to sink under the waves, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus, with compassion in his eyes, pulls Peter from the water. He holds his hand to you. There's no condemnation. He's not mad. He just wants to save you. To pull you to the rock. Hey, God. Somebody can definitely steal that. Okay, the rock, all right. We got the rock, we got rock, the rock. The news. 
We got Brock. Any, anyone else? On the rock. Everybody's on the rock. All right, let's hold. Don't be racing yet. I mean, that's what you're doing. All right. Did you write down? And you're going to hold it up, and you're going to show them to, to KK. Three, two, one, go. Thank you. 